This video gives an introduction to formal sketching methods for root loci. A reminder of the overview. The first two videos have looked at what are root loci and why are they important. Now we're going to look at how do I actually compute root loci in particular by hand. Later on we'll look at the impact on compensator design. Now we're going to show you some simple rules for producing root loci sketches by hand. And the reason we want to do this is if you can sketch by hand, then that will give you insight which can later be used for design. This video is going to focus on foundation principles. So a context then. Consider a simple feedback loop and we've given one there. You'll see we've got a compensator M and a plant G. What we want to do is expand this compensator M of S. So we've extracted out the gain factor K. So you'll see that's what I've done here. I've written M equals K M tilde. And then when I put that together, I end up with this statement here that GM, which is the loop transfer function, can be written. I've extracted the K and then I've got GM tilde. But the most important thing is what we've got here on the right. I can now write GM as K times n over d. Now for convenience you'll see we often denote this gm tilde just as g. That's a bit sloppy but you'll find people often do that. The question we want to ask is given that we've written this gm as kn over d like here, where are the closed loop poles and how do these depend on the choice of k? The first thing I'm going to do then is write the loop transfer function as kn over d and then I'm going to calculate the closed loop transfer function. So here we go. You see I've written gm equals kn over d, and therefore the closed loop transfer function for the block diagram given is this one here, kn over d over 1 plus kn over d. And I can rearrange that into this form here, kn over kn plus d. So what does this tell us? Closed loop poles can be given from two expressions. Either I can write kn over d equals minus 1, and you'll see that's come from this transfer function, or I can do kn plus d equals naught, and that's come from here. Now the key thing is you must be flexible, because depending on the scenario, it might be easier to use either of these expressions. A question then, to find the closed loop pole polynomial for the following system compensator pairs. So you remember, the first thing to do is to write gm equals kn over d, which in this particular case is going to give me k times 0.4 over s, s squared plus 3s plus 2. And then I can write pc equals k times 0.4 plus s, s squared, plus 3s, plus 2. So hopefully you're convinced that's relatively straightforward. If I do the same thing here, I can write gm equals 0.2s plus 3k over s plus 4 into s cubed, plus 3s squared, plus 3s plus 1, and therefore the closed loop pole polynomial using this formula up here, kn plus d, is given as k um, times 0.2 s plus 3 plus s plus 4 into s cubed plus 3s squared plus 3s plus 1. Just about fitted that. And for this last one, you'll see I've got gm equals 0.2k over s, s cubed, plus 6s squared, plus 11s, plus 6. So I can write the closed loop pole polynomial as 0.2k plus s, s cubed, plus 6s squared, plus 11s, plus 6. Right, there's one other relationship that you might find useful, and that's the phase relationship. So if we look at the closed loop pole 
definition, we said we could use this statement here, kn over d equals minus 1. And this expression actually gives us a phase requirement on the values of s, which could be possible closed loop pulse. So this is why. If you look at kn over d equals minus 1, that tells you that the argument has to be 180 plus or minus 360. I should really put degrees on there. I want to be formal. And obviously the argument of n over d is the argument of n minus the argument of d. So we end up with this phase requirement for s to be a closed loop pole. We must have that the argument of n of s minus the argument of d of s is 180 plus or minus n times 360, where clearly n is an integer. So the other point to note is if there exists an S which satisfies the phase requirement, I can always find a K which satisfies the gain requirement. So here's an example then. Give a phase condition on H such that there exists a K for which S is a closed looped pole. So first of all, we notice that we've restated the requirement here, so we don't need to redo it. So what have I got? Here, I've got the argument of n equals naught because n is just a constant. The argument of d is going to be the argument of s plus the argument of s plus 1 plus the argument of s plus 2. And I want this to be equal to 180 plus or minus n times 360. So let's do a little sketch and try and get some insight into what's going on here. So this sketch is now going diagram and I'm going to mark the pole positions. So I had a pole at naught, a pole at minus one, and a pole at minus two. And what I'm going to do now is conjecture that I've got some value of s just here. s equals minus 1.5. And I want to ask myself, is that s a closed loop pole? So what I'm going to do is simply plug that value of s into my formula. So I get the argument of d equals the argument of minus 1.5 plus the argument of minus 1.5 plus 1 plus the argument of minus 1.5 plus 2. Now the argument of minus 1.5, I just write it underneath, is going to be 180. The argument of minus 1.5 plus 1 is going to be 180. And the argument of minus 1.5 plus 2 is going to be 0. So the total argument of d, in this case, is 360. And you'll notice this is not equal to 180 plus or minus n360. So therefore, s equals minus 1.5 is not on the loci, because I cannot satisfy my phase requirement. Here's a different example, just to check that we've got it. So again, a reminder, here's the phase requirement, arg n minus arg d is 180 plus or minus n times 360. In this case, I've got arg n equals the argument of s plus 3. And the argument of d is going to be argument of s plus 4 plus 3 times the argument of s plus 1, because I have an s plus 1 cubed. So again, let me do a little sketch of where these poles and zeros are before I start. So you'll notice I've got three poles, so I should use three crosses so you can see it, at minus one. I've got a zero at minus three, and I've got another pole at minus four. Now in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a particular value of s equal to minus two, and say is s minus 2 a possible closed loop pole. So let's plug it in and see what we get. So we're going to get the argument of s plus 3 becomes the argument of minus 2 plus 3, which is 0. We get the argument of s plus 4 becomes the argument of minus 2 plus 4, which is 0. And the argument of s plus 1 becomes the argument of minus 2 plus 1, which is 180. So now, if I put all this together, arg n minus arg d equals 0, minus 0, minus 3 times 180, which 
meets our criteria, so therefore I am on the low side. Now, if you wanted to find out the value of k, then what I would have to do next, and I'll squeeze this in the bottom, is I've got to do k into n over d equals minus 1. So I can actually write this now. I've got k. Now n, you wrote it up here, is this number in here. It was just 1. d, you had this number here, so you had a 2. And then you had this number here cubed, so times 1 cubed. And there was a minus in there, so you'll see that gives you um, 1 if I take the minus signs out. So therefore, it tells you that k has to be equal to 2. We've introduced the basic foundation of root loci sketching, which is these expressions here. You either get the phase requirement, arg n minus arg d equals 180, plus or minus n times 360, or you can use the exact closed loop pole definition, k n over d equals minus 1, or k n plus d equals 0. And what we're going to do in the videos that follow is we're going to sh show how we can use these three expressions in order to give some simple rules for sketching the root loci.